Have you ever seen a company make a claim so big that your brain just goes, there's no way that's real? And yet deep down, you really want it to be? That's exactly what happened the first time I heard about Aptera. These guys are saying their futuristic three-wheeled machine can travel up to 1,000 miles on a single charge and it can get up to 40 miles of range every single day from sunlight alone. Yeah, 40 miles just by sitting in your driveway. Sounds impossible, right? I mean, we've heard some wild EV claims before, but this? This sounds like something Tony Stark would park outside of his lab. But before we write it off as marketing hype, I wanted to dig in, like really dig in, and see if there's actually math behind the magic. Because if Aptera's claims hold up, this could be one of the most efficient vehicles ever created. Maybe even the most efficient vehicle on the planet. So, what is Aptera, and why are people so obsessed with it? Well, first off, it's not quite a car, and it's not quite a motorcycle. It's technically classified as an autocycle. It has three wheels, it seats two people, and it looks like a blend between a private jet and a sci-fi pod racer. But despite looking alien, you drive it like a regular car. It has a steering wheel, pedals, and all the normal controls. Still, its design is nothing like what we're used to, and that's intentional. Because Aptera isn't trying to compete on luxury or horsepower, it's competing on pure efficiency. They claim this little spaceship uses less than half the energy of the most efficient electric cars currently on the road. We're talking about 10 miles per kilowatt hour, which would be roughly the equivalent of getting 300 miles per gallon in a gas car. That's not just good, it's unheard of for something highway capable. Now I don't own one, nobody really does yet, it's still in pre-production, so I can't really one by has. Do a real world test. But what I can do is take the numbers we already know, compare them with existing vehicles, and see if Aptera's claims make sense mathematically. So grab your coffee, because this is gonna get nerdy, but in the fun way. Let's start with something familiar, the Tesla Model 3 rear wheel drive. It's one of the most efficient EVs you can currently buy, with an EPA rated range of around 270 miles using a six zero kilowatt hour battery pack. If you divide that out, you get about 4.6 miles per kilowatt hour. That's fantastic efficiency by today's standards. Now here's where things get wild. Aptera claims that their car using the same EPA test cycle can get 400 miles of range with a 40, 45 kilowatt hours battery pack. If that's true, that means around 10 miles per kilowatt more than double what the Model 3 achieves. They're also saying that its built-in solar array can collect roughly four kilowatt hours of solar energy per day under good sunlight, which, would translate to roughly 40 miles of free range daily. Free. Miles. Every. Day. Just from sunlight. So, let's find out if this math checks out, or if it's just marketing moon dust. Here's the first big concept. At highway speeds, your biggest enemy isn't the road, it's the air. Pushing air out of the way is what burns most of your energy. That's why so many automakers obsess over aerodynamics. And in this department, Aptera isn't just good, it's ridiculous. Its shape looks like it was carved by the wind itself. Long, narrow, teardrop profile with wheel covers that look straight off a jet turbine. The result, a drag coefficient of just 0.13. For context, a Tesla Model 3 already famous for being aerodynamic has a drag coefficient of 0.219. That's a massive difference. But here's the kicker, a lower drag coefficient doesn't mean less air displaced overall. You also have to consider frontal area, which is basically how big the drag coefficient face of the car is that's pushing through the air. So let's run the math. A Model 3's frontal area is roughly 32 square feet. Multiply that by its 0.219 drag coefficient, and you get a total drag number of about 5.66. Now, take the Aptera slightly wider because of those wheel pants around 87 inches across, but shorter overall, about 56 inches tall. Its frontal area comes out to about 21 square feet. Multiply that by its 0.13 drag coefficient, and you get a total drag number of about 2.74. In simple terms, Aptera slices through the air with less than half the aerodynamic drag of a Model 3. And that's a huge deal because once you're cruising at 60, 70, 80 miles per hour, drag is where most of your battery energy goes. Cut that in half, and suddenly, 10 miles per kilowatt hour doesn't sound so crazy anymore. But aerodynamics aren't the whole story. Let's talk about weight. The Model 3 weighs around 4,000 pounds, give or take. The Aptera, around 2,000 pounds, half the weight. 
less mass means less rolling resistance and less energy needed to accelerate or climb hills. And since the Aptera only has three wheels, that's one less tire touching the ground, one less source of drag. Each of its tires is thinner and smaller than the Model 3's because it simply doesn't need beefy wheels for a vehicle that light. So not only does it glide through the air more easily, it glides over the ground with less friction too. And all of this stacks up. At highway speeds, your energy losses are mostly split between air drag and rolling resistance. Aptera beats conventional EVs on both fronts. Now let's move on to something most people overlook, the powertrain. The Tesla Model 3 uses a single rear motor rated for about 207 kilowatts of peak power. It's efficient, but it still has to send that power through an axle, differential, and other mechanical bits before it reaches the wheels. Each of those steps wastes a little bit of energy as heat. Aptera takes a completely different approach. Instead of one big motor in the middle, it has three smaller motors, one inside each wheel. They're called in-wheel hub motors and they apply torque directly to the tires. That means no axles, no drive shafts, and almost no transmission losses. The total power output of all three motors combined is about 150 kilowatts. That's lower than the Model 3's 207, but because the Aptera weighs so much less, it doesn't need as much power to move quickly. In fact, early test data shows it can still hit 0 60 miles per hour in around four seconds, which is sports car quick for something this efficient. So not only does it save energy, it still moves like a rocket. Now, skeptics will say, sure, that's what they claim, but what if those numbers are just ideal conditions? Fair question. Even if we assume Aptera's drag coefficient isn't exactly 0.13, maybe it's 0.14 or even 0.15, the car would still be dramatically more efficient than anything else on the road. Even at eight miles per kilowatt hour, you're still looking at over 320 miles of range from a 40 kilowatt hours battery. That's the same range as a long range Tesla, but with a battery pack that's half the size. That's not fantasy, that's physics. And remember, the car also charges itself, Aptera's roof, hood and hatch are covered in solar cells that can generate up to 700 watts of power on a sunny day. Leave it parked outside and it'll collect around four kilowatt hours of energy per day, enough for about 40 miles of driving. If your daily commute is under 40 miles, you could, in theory, never plug the car in, ever. You'd be driving purely on sunshine, literally free energy transportation. Now that's the dream, right? But dreams don't always line up with reality. So let's talk about some limitations. Solar efficiency depends heavily on location, weather, and season. If you live in Arizona, you'll get that full 40 miles a day. If you live in Seattle during winter, maybe 10 or 15. So yes, real world results will vary. But even then, you're still talking about meaningful free range every day. And here's the part most people miss. Because the Aptera is so efficient, even a small amount of solar input makes a difference. For a normal EV like a Tesla or a Rivian, slapping solar panels on the roof barely adds a few miles. It's not worth the cost. But when your vehicle sips energy instead of guzzling it, suddenly, solar makes sense. It's not a gimmick, it's a multiplier. Now let's address the elephant in the room, production. Aptera isn't a giant automaker, it's a startup. That means the real test will come when they start building these at scale. They're currently working on what's called their Pi builds, essentially final validation units before full production. Those cars will go through crash testing, safety certification, and final range verification. Once those numbers are official, we'll know exactly how accurate their claims are. But even if they fall short, say the final EPA range is 350, instead of 400 miles, that's still revolutionary for a vehicle with a 40 kilowatt hours battery. And this brings us to the bigger picture, why Aptera matters. If this company succeeds, it could completely change how we think about transportation. Imagine never having to visit a charging station unless you take a road trip. Imagine your car recharging itself every day, silently, while it sits at work. That's not just an EV, it's a step toward energy independence. And if Aptera fails, there's no backup. If Rivian collapses, we still have other electric trucks. If Lucid or Fisker disappears, we still have other luxury EVs. But if Aptera dies, there's no other company making a true mass market solar vehicle. They're the only ones seriously trying to merge solar, energy and electric mobility into one cohesive product. And that's what makes this story so exciting and so risky. Because if they pull it off, it doesn't just change cars, it changes how we think about energy itself. I also love how Aptera's team approaches skepticism. 
They're not waving their hands around talking about revolutionary tech. They're talking about aerodynamics, physics, weight, and math, all proven concepts. They're not bending the laws of science. They're using them intelligently. They've designed a vehicle that's so efficient that the laws of diminishing returns barely apply. At this level of optimization, every watt counts. Every curve, every material, every gram shaved off the body adds up. It's the same philosophy aerospace engineers use to make planes fly farther on less fuel. Except here, it's on the road, and it's powered by the sun. Now, let's talk emotions for a second. It's easy to get caught up in numbers and forget what they actually mean. But think about this. If Aptera's concept takes off, it could mean a future where cars don't drain the grid they support it. Where solar energy isn't just for rooftops, it's built right into your daily life. That's the real promise of this design. Independence. No gas stations, no charging anxiety, no power bills for commuting. Just clean, free motion, powered by physics and photons. That's something worth getting excited about. Of course, we'll need to see how it performs once production vehicles hit the road. No simulation or back-of-the-envelope math can replace real-world testing. Temperature, elevation, tire wear, wind, all of it affects efficiency. But based on what we know so far, Aptera's math isn't fantasy. It's consistent with the science we already understand. And if the numbers hold up even halfway, it's still a revolution. So, is Aptera's efficiency too good to be true? Honestly, no. It's just a glimpse of what's possible when you design for efficiency first and style second. It's not magic, it's not hype, it's engineering done smarter. Aptera isn't just building a vehicle. They're building a statement, a challenge to every automaker that says, you can do better. And maybe, just maybe, this strange little three-wheeled spaceship will prove that we've been wasting energy for decades, not because we had to, but because we didn't think differently enough. So whether you're skeptical, curious, or just fascinated by the idea of a car that can literally power itself, one thing's for sure, Aptera has already done something extraordinary. They've made us question what's possible again. And if you ask me, that's the first step toward changing the world.